that a hooligan raffle? Yeah, it is. <laughs> that was the uh, that was the Lacy's one that they set on fire. I think that wound up banning uh, burning hooligans. Oh, really? really? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. I mean, it was spectacular. But <laughs> <laughs> Incredibly unsafe. <laughs> well, that's pretty darn nice. I had to let us not see that. Yeah. You know, I think it was the, uh, nice the toasting that. of the eyebrows of the folks on the bridge as it went by that was the real problem. <laughs> <laughs> what, is that true? It was really that big? <laughs> yeah. Holy moly. And how nice to have all the tabs, too. Yeah, that, that, that helps, huh? That really yeah, makes for sure. pages it's otherwise. Yeah. 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 Hi, Dan. Hey. Where are you hey good? Hey, Dan. How are you? Was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Warm. We're in Mexico. We're close to Cancun, Playa del Carmen. I guess this is theirs to keep. A lot of people seem I to would know. I hope so, anyway. So. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Weather is good. Yes. What's What's good weather? Devin was actually all concerned that it would be all rainy. Mm. And um, when I look back, that was actually one of the hottest things to run in a warm rain. Uh, never get to do that here. Mm -hmm. I seen the. Welcome. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> this year, you're not supposed to say you're, you're not supposed to say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Look at there, that looks like the same thing I got on the table. All prepared for tomorrow. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, uh, I think I probably might All right. get out of there. We didn't get a copy of the ones we've done last no, year. Well, yeah, we did. She sent them yeah, out in the mail. Yeah. Well, well, and I think quite a while ago. Like maybe you need oh. to keep it a little open and maybe see what uh, public comments say. Almost like two oh weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. I have, I have yeah. I guess you can be up here. I'll have to because change it on. Because I, mean, I was gone for a they week on vacation and I came there? back and I couldn't yeah. find it and asked her to send them to me again and and then afterwards I found them way back. Well, it's just here's the short term. There's two pages. But I do Good. have. And I then didn't here's the I mean, I down here yeah. if you want to look at them. You probably know where I stand. We didn't, yeah. we didn't I get any numbers. And, uh, but I, I totally oh, respect it. Different view. Just, just Too much darn fighting going on. Hi, Shin. How are you doing? I'm so well. So I said all you guys are doing is just sending a hard copy in case you bring out something you want to read. You want me to read it before? Here we go, right here. I think I did. Yes, I did. Well, you know, you can throw it out. It's no, no, I, I read this on my own. I think you buy me back this time. Oh, thank you. Sneak it in until three to put it on. Thank you. Reboot. There you go, reboot. You know what's interesting? Pay, pay with my. I talked about this. My city, city wage. There you go. That's ready to go. I got another meeting at two. Hello. I sent you guys an email today. Yeah, I think I read the email. Right. Thank All you. Right. Hello. Hi, Larius. I, I hear that you uh, have to receive. Yeah, I read it. I read it. Oh, well, I feel left out. Oh, nice. I, it was like hard to narrow down to just okay. three in each category for me. We're everywhere. Yeah. 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 We're everywhere. The comment was that um, people would send them in and even narrow them down to just the two. Oh. So I don't really want you to send it out that way. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. Oh, it wasn't? That's I, I limited mine to... 
I figured just as a time constraint, but. <laughs> oh, well, good, dude. <laughs> Crap, I didn't know that. I thought that was the limit. Because <laughs> there, was, there was a lot, as, you know. No. When was that? Or, or overlapping yeah. ideas. Overlapping. I don't get it either. My parents showed it. Nice. Got the snow time moment. Oh, a whole. I didn't even think about that until now, but I thought that that was yeah. our there limit. There are three different uh, plans for Highway 50 corridor. This oh, yeah. Several duplicates in the housing. I've been so. Yep, yep. <laughs> Yep, I saw that too. See how ambitious I was here. <laughs> right, I got uh, I have exactly six o'clock on my little hootus here, my phone. So let's uh, let's get started. Um, go ahead and let's see. So work session. So uh, we're gonna uh, talk about goals and priorities for the uh, coming year and uh, beyond, I guess. Um, Again, work session, so input is appreciated. And uh, if you have anything, just wave me down and I will get to you when we have a, a moment. Um, so, Larry, why don't you? Um, yeah, it's kind of what the, the format uh, you want to do. We had thought probably that um, Linda would probably be down here with the, um, the easels and, and mark down what you wanted to mark down as far as maybe consolidating goals or coming up with some new ones and then look at maybe uh, voting on, on the priority that you see for the various goals so that we can kind of come up with uh, uh, where the majority of the um, votes land and do that with just the little um, stickers. Um, so if that, if that works for you, mm -hmm. I think that's see that good. way. And, Nope. Yeah. Okay. And Cheryl, why don't you give us kind of a little background on how this has worked in the past and kind of how we can expect to maybe use this uh, document when we get it together? Um, I believe we actually started setting priorities two years ago. And the idea was to set priorities and then look back at the end of the year um, during probably uh, the time when we are working on the budget for the next year. Because if we could get into the right kind of a cycle, we should set priorities. Those priorities should have a lot to do with where any money that isn't fixed money in the budget would go. And then at the end of the year, we could look back and see what we had achieved in terms of our priorities. Did we do what we said was important to do and, and really make that um, accomplishment. And so um, I guess this is our effort to really uh, get back into that. Um, you did get copies of two previous priorities, uh, the 2016 priorities, um, which is the one that was um, all of these uh, colored ones, and they were in categories according to an objective. And then uh, the one that was done last year um, actually was the one in these blocks that had the, the objectives and, um, and the goals in here and the strategy and so on. And I don't know that it was clear, but I was really glad that staff also forwarded the vision statement because in the vision statement, um, we list a number of categories. And um, those categories, essence of community, sense of community, central place, economic base, land use, housing needs, recreational opportunities, heritage, and community participation and leadership, they are the same as the goals that are in this category. And then we did objectives underneath them. So this, the way it was done last year, actually lined up with the vision statement for the city. And, um, and the way it was done two years ago, um, things were just kind of grouped, you know, according to what people brainstormed, what uh, council members had brainstormed. Um, so I guess we can kind of decide 
um, how we want to do that, if we want to align it again with uh, the categories in the vision statement, or if we just want to group them according to uh, how they come out. Um, and I notice in, in looking over what was submitted, I know that, um, you know, it sounds like some things were maybe submitted by more than one pe person, and so they got in there two or three times, and, and we do have some duplicates in there. And so um, before we start marking anything, we might want to take out some of those duplicates uh, that are in there. Um, people might have seen some other ones. Um, you know, we had duplicates with uh, a couple things in housing. Uh, we had several duplicates with the Highway 50 overlay and, and plan for Highway 50 and Gateway and um, we, startup had, trees. we had <laughs> duplicates with startup trees. We had duplicates with uh, Union Pacific parking. Um, you know, so we can kind of take out some of those maybe as, as we start along. But, but that's just a, a brief history of what we had done in the past. So. Excellent. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's kind of just dive right in, and, um, and this is probably not an exhaustive list, so we may wind up coming up with some additional ones to the list, right? Um, but we'll start with sh kind of the short-term goals, which I think would be things we hope to uh, have uh, some oh, progress on this year, if not completion. So... Um, the parking, let's, let's, that's a good place to start, parking, that's, um, I think people care about that. Yeah, that seemed to have come up quite a bit. I, I kind of just put uh, UP parking, overall parking, fees in lieu of parking, no residen residential parking in front of businesses into one group. Yep. So I don't know if we want to just make that one group. and well. And I think parking should go together with transportation. Mm -hmm. With transportation. I think um, so too. Yeah. 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 yeah, and a lot of, a, yeah, a lot of this is under parking kind of tied together, certainly. Um, let's see. So. I think that is a really good idea to put uh, the parking under the transportation so we can coordinate all of that and one of the things that really didn't show up in there I was one of those people that thought of a lot of things afterwards sure <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. and um, but the idea of connectivity um, I think is something that we ought to add also under that um, par parking transportation and it's probably more a long-term sort of thing but but I'm, what I'm thinking about in all of that, um, there was an old transportation plan mm -hmm. that was done. I, do you know when it was done? I think we did that in 2011. 2011? There's I a copy on my desk. Yeah, I haven't looked at that in a really long time, but one of the things that I remember from that is there were... Um, there were some efforts to uh, try and put in some new streets. Um, I remember that particularly on the west side to try and make it easier for emergency services to get from some parts of town to the hospital mm, yep. because there are some sections as you get out there where you, you just you have to come back into town and then out again. and. And so, and I also think with all the new building we have going in on the east side of town that there are uh, some major issues with uh, getting those people that will be living out there in the future into the downtown. Um, we, everyone has talked about a plan for Highway 50, which I think needs to extend way out yes. to where all that new building is and think about gateways out there and uh, ways to get people into town both with vehicles and also with um, bicycles and and trails and I'm also thinking that I don't think the city has ever submitted to CDOT 
any kind of plan for 291, which I think is going to become very important as we have all this growth out on the east side. So no, I would put that under short-term goal, actually. I think it's really crucial to tackle that soon, that um, any kind of development on 291 can actually participate on, on that. So that would be, so that kind of, so there's transportation and parking in long term and then parking in short term. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we need to kind of pick out some short term kind of parking and maybe transportation goals that we can see tangible progress on this year. Um, and then look at that parking and transportation piece and the long-term goals as more uh, kind of bigger vision kickoff pieces. Yeah. I, I kind of have a question of, of how, I mean, some of these are, are an actual action that we want to complete, yep. and some of them are planning kinds vision of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yep. um, and some of them are are maybe plans that we should get in place this year, even though they're plans for the future. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just wondering if there's what the best way people think is to deal with the things. You know, that and I think it's worth kind of labeling what they actually, where they would fall into actual uh, doable um, action items or if they're uh, more planning. Uh, yeah, we can certainly vision, do that even on our sheets. Just mark an action or plan yeah. um, next to the to the items. So let's gonna let's let's gonna start at the top of parking and just work through that real quick. Um, so the Union Pacific parking's on there twice. So let's start with that. Um, for me, that's a fairly high priority mm -hmm. thing, and I think speaking with the Slide of Business uh, Alliance, that's a a big deal for them. Um, I know we have uh, Mara um, McKillop doing a parking assessment for us, so that kind of ties into that. And it's non know. non controversial. Right. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be cheap. That was my question. Do we have a sense <laughs> of cost, and where does it, where does that come from? Yeah, it's not going to be cheap, and I my guess is it'll be um, probably. Uh, twenty, thirty thousand dollars somewhere in there. Yeah, um, that just for the lease, and then we'll have to put up fencing and, and some type yeah. of. Uh, and and do we have a sense of how many parking spaces we'll get? Looks like about seventy-one or seventy-two. Okay. Do we have an update on what's happening? With yeah, that? I got an email from uh, uh, the, those guys just the other day. So you there. Um, he's putting together the uh, plan. He did find out that they already have uh, uh, budgeted to remove that building, so there was some talk of us removing that building and getting some leasing, some credit the for that. The building's gone, I'm told. There's one more over there, yeah. and they're going to take that out this summer. Um, so he's putting the paperwork together for that. So it is actually moving forward, it appears. Oh. It's one of the few pieces so I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> I mean, one of the questions we might ask on that too is, is we've talked at various times about charging for parking, and that might be an ideal place to do it because we know what our actual costs are. Um, you could put up one kiosk for all the parking on, on the other side of the bridge probably and, and charge for it and then try to recover some of that cost too if that's a – you know, the direction the, the council wants to go. Do we have a sense of, of with other similar communities, have they gone down that road? And if so, how has it been received? Yeah. Communities um, put in parking meters and they take parking meters out and, you know, it goes back and forth and sometimes in kind of cycles. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's a, an expensive pro project when you look at something like downtown along linear streets, F Street and all the various downtown streets. But mm -hmm. uh, it's quite a bit simpler with a confined parking lot to do it, so it might be a good place to, to at least try it. Yeah, and I think that might be a you know fairly simple solution, just a kiosk there that you put your card in, um, you pay for your hour or whatever, and hopefully that helps defray some of that cost of leasing that property. Um, 
it also gives us an additional toehold on that side of the river, which I think is an important thing moving forward. The so, boat ramp came up in there, and uh, you know, I know that's a problem with the parking down there. I don't, I don't see any immediate fix to that. Uh, that that ramp's going to have to be redone. See, it's getting deteriorated, and the traffic on it is uh, has been significant. Yeah. Uh, the uh, little parking out there by the Arkansas headwaters is kind of served its purpose, but uh, they're still getting so much. Uh, traffic and, and you know just people gathered down there it's going to make it pretty tough to do anything with that boat ramp I don't know that was not my idea but I I seen it on there and also that I, I grade crossing I understand with the UP that that may be affected if we if we lease that ground a little yeah that's inside. that's part of that whole of the parking all of that's kind of wrapped together and so they're putting that whole package together as one thing. Have you heard of anything about uh, some of the property over on that side being sold? Uh, that side of the Bought river? From the UP? You know, they're, no. It's possible. It's for sale. They're starting I've, to. I've heard about it. Uh, <coughs> it's in place just yet or not. But that'll be on the west side, the way I understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, the boat ramp there actually uh, state parks has um, budgeted some money to improve the boat ramp that would actually be that's um, that's kind of roughed in on the other side of the river so it wouldn't be the boat the Coors boat ramp it would be a, a new boat ramp in that parking area on the, other side. the other side yep downstream of oh. the bridge so um, more convenient for outfitters, uh, you know, safer, less congested, um, probably a, a slightly better solution. Um, so what do, what do you guys think, priority on that one? UP parking? Yeah. Really yeah. High, yeah. Priority. Yeah. high priority. One in action. Yes. <laughs> uh, one being It's good because I'm chasing that one already. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's going to be um, high priority. Yep. And in in theory, that could be done by summer, um, depending on how fast those guys move. Um, the in-depth review of parking, transportation issues, um, working with a wide group of community stakeholders. We do have the parking study is in progress. Mara was here Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And uh, interviewing downtown businesses, walked uh, around with Deb, took a look at all the parking, um, and she'll be back a number of times. She's supposed to graduate in May, beginning of May, so she will have this project done by then. Mr. May, did, did we not postpone the parking study? Yeah, it was, no, it, this is a uh, graduate student uh, okay. that's doing this as her capstone project. Um, it, Oh, great way to do that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Got anybody who's willing to do a transportation study for free? Or? <laughs> <laughs> um, there, you know, the countywide transportation uh, um, group is working on that, and I think uh, um, um, that's moving forward. And we should have some. We need. I don't know if anybody has been going to those meetings. Um, Eileen Rogers was going to them, and I know she still is, but I don't think anyone from the current council is. And I've been, I've been in touch with them. She was. I think they're, the next one of those might be. It might be good this, for us. I think it's this Thursday. This morning. Thursday, is it? Yeah. Um, so we'll try and figure out when and where that is and get an email out and see if we can okay, get somebody yeah. to attend that. It's in Ponce Springs, mm. 9 o'clock. Nine o'clock. So we can defer the transportation to more of a countywide than a citywide. Well, I think they're inter. And that's fine with yeah, me. Yeah, I think they're they're intertwined. You know, I, I don't is that? know that any of us are big enough to have our own standalone transportation program. I kind of read this as Salida transportation, but that's fine. Um, and there is, uh, yeah, the CDOT guys will be up to talk. Um, about their bus staying program, which is a, a kind of a 
statewide bus system that'll be stopping in Salida. And so that potentially will free up a couple of the buses that the uh, Salida shuttle is using to go to Denver now oh. um, for that potentially could be used uh, in the county so for I get a call, yeah. connections. Um, so that one, again, I think that's kind of in process, but it is, uh, it's important. No, I, 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 th you know, I think about the impact, the Natural Grocers is opening, they're saying now in October. Um, and so, you know, the UP parking addresses that lower part of downtown, but I'm thinking, you know, around second and third up to fourth. Um, I, I, that to me is a priority because it's. Does anybody know how much of that parking lot is going to be taken up by, that, by the building itself, or is it going to remain parking? Don't think they're changing that structure. Yeah, they're trying to add uh, one piece onto the side. But I don't think there's existing parking there now, so I don't think they're losing any parking spaces, or if it is, it's a couple of spaces. drive throughs Natural groceries? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, a small addition adjacent to the alley, I think, is the only thing. With a drive-up for us? They're expanding the footprint. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they will have that parking available. And I think one of the big things with that also is uh, Mara is aware of that. Okay. And... Um, you know, once we know what the parking problem is, mm -hmm. or if they're, you know, right now it's more anecdotal, like, oh, I couldn't park downtown right in front of my business today, so we have a parking problem. <laughs> um, and certainly that is a problem at that moment, but it doesn't mean that we have this uh, pervasive, overwhelming parking pro uh, problem. I, you know, I was in Denver two weeks ago, and they have a parking <laughs> problem, especially if you're from the mountains and have a... Yep. <laughs> pickup truck that's of a useful size. <laughs> um, it, it's the fact that it's kind of looped in with transportation. I know I happen, I mean, transportation is that issue. I mean, we get a lot of people that are not, that are working in Salida that are coming from out of town that, that have, I mean, I think that's, it's in my opinion, I mean, that, that's more than anecdotal. I think that's, yeah. Definitely, yeah. Right, um, but there has to be quantifiable, uh, some quantifiable evidence to work off of. Right, hence the study. Yeah. I, I, My, um, sorry. Cheryl. Go ahead. Oh. I really want to make a point that we don't have, we don't want to destroy downtown by having parking everywhere, by having extra places. So maybe the, uh, we, um, the solution is all over that we we um, clarify where people from out of town can park and then get into town, whether it's with a bicycle or with a um, with a little van that. Um, yeah, provide, so uh, yeah, and that would be part of the transportation plan. So that that seems important. So, so that, that might include park and ride. Is that what you're trying to exactly. suggest? Right. Yes. On Highway 50, we've got some lots out there that could be used for that. Yes. I think that's a good idea. Um, I might also say that um, the last year or so, Rusty and I have, were a little subcommittee kind of working on parking, and we did uh, talk to a number of people that owned property kind of around the downtown here. And, um, and at this point, there is one of those that might be a possibility. Um, I have been trying to uh, solidify that and contact that person the last week or so and haven't, haven't actually done that. I don't know for sure yet, but, but there are some possibilities there too that still might come forward from the discussions that Rusty and I had with, with various people in town. Okay, so we'll put that, it seems, we're going to have all blue dots on, on this thing, I'm pretty <laughs> sure, but on the, so. Well, in that, in that respect, that's going to take a pretty good budgeted item to, yeah. to get those parking spots that we identified. It's more of a land purchase. Yep. Okay. Um, so, again, fairly high priority to figure out, and that ties in with the Union Pacific. Those are kind of one and the same. Um, 
So parking in lieu fees for new developments. Um, so I don't know. I, I kind of got the impression that was fairly high priority kind of. Yeah. Kind of the same as Union Park, Pacific Park, King, all that too, a little bit. It's kind of like, yeah. Oh. Yep. You missed, missed it. By yep. I won. I won, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, down below. <laughs> oh. No, that no, was no, where you were going, one. but we haven't quite yeah, got to the, the one down below is blue yet. <laughs> 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 it's the so, parking in downtown is what we're talking about. But let's talk about it and see if we need to right. change that or not. So that uh, parking in lieu of fees for new developments. Um, and who, I don't know. Right, right sure now in exactly downtown, where we're at there. in downtown, if, if you develop a property, you can't develop it in the way that the rest of downtown is developed. So the, the typical outcome, if one of those buildings would um, um, be, be taken down, the typical outcome is Pueblo Bunker Trust, like a big parking, parking lot and then having an, yeah. an ugly building there. So to, to preserve downtown, I think it makes sense to have some kind of uh, code change that makes it possible for developers to pay the city an appropriate amount of money in exchange for some of the parking requirements. And that maybe would help us with purchasing some of these other properties exactly. that yeah. Rusty and I had explored. Oh. Okay. Glenn, what do you think about, that's kind of your, well, your world? Glenn, would you mind coming up? Yeah, I, I was watching one of the planning commission tapes and it's really frustrating when people leave and you can't hear what's going on. Sure, sure. Um, right now in our zoning code, the C2 district really is the downtown. And it says you don't have to provide parking unless you're expanding the footprint. So even if somebody adds a second story, they add all that square footage, they don't have to provide parking. Um, but if they do increase a, a, a footprint, one of the options might be parking in lieu, uh, a fee in lieu. And we've talked about it with the patios. Um, potentially, either you provide a parking space on site or you pay a park, uh, parking in lieu fee. So that's the discussions that I've heard come up now and then. Um, but I did mention uh, with the Mara study, kind of get an idea of what the availability is. It kind of gives you a little bit of a background to put something in place that would be a, um, a fee in lieu of parking. Yep, okay. And we would, to do that, we would probably have to figure out what exactly that value is and be able to make a, uh, have a, a justifiable uh, price there. So again, the UP would pro probably would probably work for that because you can come up with a, a lease value as based, you know, purchase value based upon the lease value, and then look at our total costs, and then we can factor in some of the other properties we're looking at. Okay. Should be pretty easy to come up with a value per parking that. space. Okay. All right. Of course, that UP parking down there is just serving primarily right now, serving the downtown. The farthest, farthest downtown areas around uh, the boathouse and that sort of thing, and there's a lot of people who want to park there and walk. Yeah. And so I don't know how yeah. how effective it's going to be, well, but uh, there again, if, if I come into town, come into town, I'm trying to go to the boathouse or something. I first go down to the F Street and then across the bridge, and there's no places. I end up parking back by Safeway somewhere. Right. So if we get Lower downtown moved into the off F Street um, into the UP property that frees up those other spaces farther away. Cheryl yeah. Rusty, did you guys talk to anybody about that property which is uh, just south of the uh, the old uh, Public Works parking lot? Somebody told me that was uh, a brewery. Maybe you know something about that. Uh, that's where the Soulcraft well, cook, guys had cook. bought had bought that building originally and then there were some issues with it so they wound up on the highway um, so, so that that brick building is yeah is that property available or for sale do you know 
It may be, I don't know. That would be, that'd be a prime location for I mean, just what we were just talking about, moving some of that parking up there. Uh, that's pretty popular by uh, where, uh, where those buildings are. That's a pretty popular area for the rest of the town for shopping and that sort of thing. And the other thing that I seen on here was the non-residential parking in storefronts. You know, we faced this problem down on East Street across from the, the Elks, and we've also faced it down in, uh, in the uh, 200 block of F Street. Uh, uh, residents that are par uh, actually got apartments above, uh, that's a scoop, and uh, up in there. Uh, they, they've always been kind of a complaining about no parking, and I do know that there's some area back in there around Bigelow's that might might be suitable for some of that stuff. I don't know what can be purchased or not. Do you, do you guys know that? Did you do anything on that, Rusty? Um, Bigelow subdivided that little lot, and we missed that opportunity several years ago. And then, of course, that uh, lot behind the, the five and dimes for sale. Yeah, the that. property you were talking about uh, south of the old public works, which is the, you know, the land we tried to buy there which our current properties were leasing for parking. Uh, last I heard, there was another brewery besides Soulcraft going in there. Oh, really? They were going to use the old equipment inside that building. Really? So that's the last I heard on that. So we kind of stopped on that one. And then across the ditch from there is another lot that Cheryl was working on. Right. So, um, and, and then the Hilton, too. But... <laughs> We have made it through three items in yep. like half an hour. We better hurry then, haven't we? All right. So parking is, I mean, this whole, the whole parking page, I guess, we got to figure out kind of the, just the, where do we start and what do we want to get done this year? What do we want to? you know, hopefully have in motion there. So the the UP and the in-depth review are ongoing. Fee and Lou, I think we can kick that off to planning and zoning to fit into their schedule when they have time. Because um, they're, they're, no they're not doing too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but maybe they could have by, you know, by summer, some point, maybe some some ideas around fee and lieu, and uh, what that might look like. Um, the residential parking in front of storefronts. I don't. That's that's kind of a challenging one. I think. You know, I know they do. In uh, you guys been to Golden? Mm -hmm. So they give you a little sticker, and so you can park on that block. And it is the world's most annoying parking. Uh, situation I think um, but you know there's possibilities of doing that something like that um, we're allowed nighttime parking with uh, something like that but we've tried that th that aspect with the uh, stickers of course that wasn't very receptive we've tried that several times but I agree with you that's probably a good thing in the residence if they want to park close to their well you get a sticker that's save them getting a parking ticket. Um, I don't know how many how many residents do they have down there. Do you have any idea what the what the apartment uh, you got uh, one seventeen and a half and uh, two something up in there and through there and I'm I'm not sure. I think we're probably talking about twenty, maybe twenty apartments at max. Yeah, no idea. And again, that and some of those have their own space in the back. Yeah, right. uh, not where Tuttle's, or, uh, yeah, where but Tuttle's was. Yeah, some of them do, some of them don't. So maybe, you know, maybe it's worth uh, having, uh, um, seeing if we can figure out exactly what that the number is. Either. There's quite I don't think it'd be too challenging. Too. Is that something we could have Planning Commission look at also? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to give all of this to, to Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what they used to can have. Just take this half of the years list. Past, they used to have underground parking right there where, uh, Right uh, to the west of uh, Pueblo Bank and Trust, yeah. really? they had a motors, and they had a parking lot underneath there, and they also had a parking area back in behind uh, where uh, Sukasi is. So what happened to that underground parking? It got filled in with dirt. 
And then they build on it. So we're not going to be able to use that one. Um, <laughs> get a shovel and dig it out. Yeah, yeah heck yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't be too compacted. That, that'll help, help, help with your shoulder rehab. <laughs> but what Tom Picorni did on that new deal down at the crib, putting that parking in there, that's, that's remarkable, Tom. You did a nice job. Yeah. And I appreciate that. I was down looking at it the other day. How many spaces do you have down there? Well, and they're all designated for your tenants? Yeah. That's, that's okay. That's good. You did good. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to get with maybe staff can kind of think a little bit about how um, that program would look. Okay. Um, parking and patios, there is, that's moving forward, right? We're, uh, we should see some. A resolution on the patios. March six and March twenty. March six. So okay. So that one, that one's happening, and then UP parking. That's back up to the top. So. Um, does that sound? Does it sound about right? So the UP parking. Look at some transportation issues. How do we get people? Uh, from the highway downtown so they don't have to have a car with them, um, et cetera. Parking in fee and lose off to P&Z and then the, we'll get some ideas about residential parking in downtown areas and how that's dealt with in other municipalities from staff. Uh, in our CDC, um, yeah, what are, we, what are the next steps? Um, I believe they're about to close on two pieces of that property uh, any day now. Is so, that Bear Creek piece? Or? I'm not entirely certain, but. I, I put that down, and my thoughts were that yeah. they've got some items that we have to clean up with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to get together, clean that up, so they can move forward with those sales. And while we're cleaning up those items, know what their their end result or their end goals are with what's left over yeah and that's been uh so there was talk of a work session at one point and right. we never really maybe it's time to get that yeah, in we place can sit down least. with those guys i know they're um the sales are are moving forward they're going to be debt free and uh, have some property and i i believe their interest is to return that to the city and then open it up to a lot of public input. Now that we have the attorney on board, uh, maybe he can help us to navigate. Well, yeah, I mean, they would re yeah, um, they would re just return clear free title property to the city, and then the city can do with that property as the city or pleases. Yeah, so. We will need a parking lot. <laughs> but that will be a, that will wind up being a, a long public discussion, I would think, kind of along the lines of what we did with the Corjo group when they were trying to do their thing um, and figure out what the best use of that property is. So, um, so certainly, I think those mm -hmm. things are both uh, are both high priority mm -hmm. things that are, again, uh, items that are moving forward and in the hopper. So I was alerted yesterday, actually, by uh, that there are some issues that we need to address soon with the NRCDC. Like, uh, the plan is to put the water line uh, through, through an existing underpath um, that, um, which would be the cheapest, cheapest way to um, construct the water line, which would, which would take away a potential, huge potential uh, way to connect the neighborhoods. Um, so I think it is important that we have intense communication with the NRCDC. Yeah, yeah and I, I think we really need to look at that. Yeah. Right. I think there's probably uh, been some conversations with them already that we don't know about, but, uh, you know, basically the infrastructure and stuff that goes in out there is going to be very, very costly. And uh, I, I personally believe that the developers need to look at that. Say that again. I said the infrastructure being put in out there is going to be quite costly, and I think we need to look at the developers to uh, to try and uh, obtain that rather than have the city do it. 
Yeah, it, I think the development should should but pay right for now, it. Right now, this town, the NRCDC, the city's out of it with the NRCDC. It's their baby. Yep. Right, but we have I'm having a problem working with them. I'd like to see that develop. But there's some other issues, and I put down uh, some economic uh, development, and uh, you know there was a lot of talk about looking for. Uh, Trade school, or looking for a bunch of stuff to go in there. And I don't know. I don't know where they're at on that either. But uh, yeah, I'm certainly interested in that, and uh, yeah, maybe community. some housing development yeah. with that. Yeah, I think that's where the community uh, discussion comes from. And I don't yeah. believe that they have any uh, immediate plans to do anything other than uh, retire the debt and turn the property over to the city. Um, beyond that, I don't know that there are any plans. Um, so maybe we can set up that, uh, bring the, those guys in for our okay, next uh, work, work session, session and for uh, discussion. Okay. All right. Housing. So um, housing, the housing office, again, that is moving forward I believe with the with the county and the um, <coughs> that person that that will be looking at that they're trying to hire right now um, and they're hoping to have that person in place by April um, and at that point then um, I think one of their main tasks is to figure out exactly what that organization looks like, what the funding mechanisms are going to be, and, um, and just the nuts and bolts of how that works. Um, but um, certainly a, a very high priority and something that um, a number of uh, the council members have been working really hard on with the HPAC and the Housing Trust and the county and BV and Poncha. Anything else on that? Um, the uh, standardizing the code and policy on affordable housing is critical. I think something we need to have in place uh, um, a month or five ago. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a bunch of new development that's coming online, and we don't have any. Uh, codified requirements for affordable housing we're getting some we're getting some stuff done um, through the the planning uh, process but it should be in the code I think and it yeah. I'd say highest priority yeah, because, yeah. or else we it's gonna we're gonna be put into this case-by-case -case kind of right scenario <laughs> We don't and, have and, that kind of time. Yeah, the case by case, I don't know, it makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. You know, certain, certain developments, it's 70 or 80 percent, others it's 100, um, and we need to level the playing field. I think so, too. I think we really need a inclusionary housing policy, something that's set, and we need to decide, you know, what, what kinds of incentives we'll give and won't give, and some of that needs to be laid out so that when people are planning a project, they can see what's going to happen and we just need all of that in policy and I also do not like this case by case kind of thing yep. where do we Glenn do you have, have you, when you touch on that for us Well, I, I like the idea of a policy um, because right now you are negotiating for those things, whether it's a planned development or it's an annexation. Um, you have some things to give and take with it. If you put it in the code, you follow the code. So, um, you know, I, I think I like the idea of just where we are right now of going the policy route. now. If you want to go down the path of, again, a fee for housing, um, that would have to definitely be in the code. So if you're not providing X amount of affordable housing, you provide X amount of dollars. Um, and I've heard various things. I, I think our previous attorney said you have to do the nexus study. It's kind of a major study. But then I've had other people that are in the business that says, 
it's really not that difficult to, to take that step to see what that fee would be. So um, that's kind of a, a step for if council wants to go that route. I've, I've had several developers say, we don't want to negotiate it. <laughs> we just soon no. one size fits all. Um, we heard that at, at City of Denver also, no. that they spend a lot of time, a lot of staff time trying to negotiate things and try and be consistent. Um, sometimes the fee. Now, I guess the one drawback is um, by negotiating in each project, then you're kind of spreading it out throughout the community um, versus getting a big chunk of dollars that now we go out and buy a site for affordable housing. Now, now you're kind of, it looks a little different, but um, there may be ways to work around that to actually buy units in new development. You know, the city would buy them and deed restrict them. But I know uh, uh, Cheryl said maybe the planning commission ought to take that on, but I mean, ultimately it's city council policy. So they could certainly give you some recommendations um, of what the, how the policy looks or whether we take that big step for um, the fee in lieu type of approach. But yeah, and that, might be, that might be a good one to have uh, a, some a member or two from the council that might be interested in that uh, take a look at it and uh, help develop that I like that idea as a subcommittee mm -hmm. um, we have some new attorneys on board too maybe they have a different um, a, a different approach also I'd be open to doing that as well okay. and Jennifer Commode from uh, Gunnison runs the housing authority over there she's kind of offered to give advice on some of these kinds of things so we could meet with her too and great all right so um we'll send out an email um about that this week trying to figure out who wants to be involved in that process um Not sure what that one is saying. <laughs> Determine and implement processes for all participating parties to enhance affordable housing. So, same thing. Same yeah. thing. All that's yeah. missing is in a synergistic fashion. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, okay. So that that kind of is same as the other two. Kind of in falls underneath that. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, uh, short. Reed has his hand up. Oh, yeah, Reed. You want to uh, do it on microphones so sure. folks watching on home can hear you? At home, across the planet. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the big thing, things that I don't see on that list is talking about a regional um, housing policy or strategy. Um, that would look beyond just the city of Salida, but working with uh, neighboring jurisdictions. So this idea of a, a larger housing strategy. So I'd love to see that on your radar because then it can also be on other people's radars. Otherwise, we just don't get there. Yeah, that, I was, do you think that's part of the housing office? That's what I was assuming was that it was part of the housing office. You know, the person in the housing office is going to have a pretty huge plate to tackle and they're going to need all the support they can get. Plus, if this is someone from out of town and they don't need the lay of the land, know the lay of the land, then they're going to need all hands on deck to help them get there. And ultimately, that strategy needs to be derived from the towns, from the people, um, to, to be effective. So uh, even if that person or when that person is in place, I still think we need to have it on our radar to plan for that, okay. to plan to plan. So that can kind of, that can go with that standardizing code and policy and then looking at uh, uh, how does that fit into more of a regional strategy as well. Well. Thanks. As you guys um, start to shape this policy, which is great, you know, it's something we need. A um, couple things I ask you to consider. Um, the AMI thing with the percentages is for us always seems to be a moving target um, when, when you equate it to purchases versus rentals. 
Um, one of the other things we're running across in, in trying to accommodate some of this need is we're finding in, in our own Chafee County housing study points this out that when you get below 100% AMI, those people are typically rentals, renters rather, I'm sorry. And uh, especially at 80%, the, the study specifically defines them as renters and doesn't even address or, or, or look at uh, purchases. So when you have a developer developing um, homes for sale, then achieving these AMIs that are, that are below 100%, we're trying to sell homes to people who aren't buyers. And, and it creates a, its own problem. Um, so that's maybe where a fee in lieu or some sort of other, other device might be handy. Um, but, but one of the things that's most con confounding for us is figuring out where this AMI thing lands. Um, we understand that you know, there's kind of an annual or some periodic study that defines what that is as far as a rental number goes. But then when you back into it, uh, principal interest payments at varying interest rates and things like that, it becomes a moving target that's hard to hit. So I just ask you to consider those things moving forward so we can um, have, have some definitions we can work with. Yeah. Um, I do agree that we need some definitions on that. Um, and actually, in our e and subcommittee today, we spent a long time talking about just that. Um, the issues that affect that are how many people are in the household. And um, there are some averages that are used in a number of other communi communities. Um, I think um, considering a, a one-person household for a studio, a 1.5 for a one-bedroom, a 2.5 for a two-bedroom, a 3.5 for a three-bedroom. Do I have this right, Reed? That's 1.5 people per bedroom. The... 1.5 people per bedroom, yeah. So, so I think if we can set some of those in place, uh, then that might help some of that moving target. Um, there also are some calculated formulas that some other housing authorities like over in Gunnison and some other places have used. And I think, I think part of it is us as a city saying this is the way we want to do it. And so we can look into some of those and make some recommendations. Um, and if we're going to have uh, a subcommittee to look at some of this housing, maybe that's something that we could also tackle. But I think the one really difficult thing on that is interest rates, because interest rates really impact the payments um, that people make when they purchase a home. And um, you know, we all know what the current interest rate is. The year that we might make an agreement with a developer or, or um, through code, the year that they make an agreement with the city to have so many units at a certain AMI. The problem is that by the time the developer goes to actually sell that house, that unit, we don't know what the interest rate's going to be a year from now or two years from now. And, um, and, so, um, and so that's an issue that we will probably always have to deal with that, and um, may have to just sort of err on a little bit of a high side to protect the developer on that one. Um, but we can certainly look into some of those things and make some recommendations on those as well. Although I also have to uh, disagree with Walt on the 100% AMI. Um, I think the Housing Trust has been very successful in some home sales to people at the 70% AMI, and that's something that other housing authorities have done too. Probably below 70% AMI, it probably isn't realistic that we're going to have people purchase homes. But Okay, so in that housing, I think we'll uh We'll incorporate some of that. We'll incorporate so. that, and I think the um, if uh, at the end of the year we had some functioning policy and some real clear guidelines on some of those issues, I think we would think it was fairly successful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Short-term rentals. That's the that's ongoing um, kind of a thing. Oh, yeah. Sure. I apologize, I failed to mention uh, something else. The, um, in, in discussions in this room for the many years, we've talked about reaching these AMI numbers, various percentages. 
And, and it's always been agreed that once we get down, not necessarily just below 100, but certainly by the time we're touching into the 80 number, it's always been a private-public partnership. And, and I think Glenn did mention incentives. If, if we're going to achieve anything, if we're ever going to build, well, I can tell you as a, as a developer, we can't build 80% AMI. It, it doesn't pencil. So it has to have some incentivization, whether it's you know, reduced fees, no fees, whatever it is. Um, and the only time anybody's ever been able to buy a house, and, and it, I have limited research, but I've spoken with, with three pretty good sources. When there's been a purchase at 80% or below, it's always been incentivized and, and um, subsidized. It's not a, it's not a straight across the, the board. It's just not a sale where that 80% that guy walks into a bank, gets a loan, and goes buys the house. So with, with deference to that, yeah, we're happy to try to, to deal with that buyer if, if we can find that buyer. Um, but you have to understand that that's some, not something that the developer can shoulder without incentives and subsidies. And, um, this is a long list of stuff, and we aren't going to solve any of these problems tonight, but we are going to hopefully outline a strategy to look at them. And I appreciate that. And I don't want to belabor this, but one last thing. Uh, we are working with another developer. You guys may recall Belmont uh, we had originally had a plan teed up for the Vanderveer. We're working with a similar uh, tax credit finance LICTI type deal. And, and they're proposing a, a 40 to 50 units here on land that, that we control and, and we're, we're planning to develop in the next two years. So one thing I'd ask you to consider is as, as, the, um, as the bucket is filled, please consider maybe, uh, like you've done with the, with the uh, short-term rentals, you know, it's a percentage of or something, or when we reach a certain goal, um, it may, may be able to lift the burden on future development. You know, if we need 50 and somebody builds 45, well, then, you know, building another 20 may not be rational. So, you know, please take that into consideration that we, uh, we may actually, God forbid, re reach a place where we, we, we start to fill the bill. Okay, very good. Uh, Short-term rentals. What... So we have our the policy that was put in place last April or May. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's fairly new. Um, it seems like there may be some improvements we could do to that. I think it's mostly at this point enforcement uh -huh. is, yeah. is the issue. I think most everything else is in place but the enforcement and we never got we never got the fees raised to cover the costs of what the enforcement would be. And so I think it's mostly those fees and enforcement that we need to look at there. Okay. And I think Monica has been working yeah, pretty Yeah, staff is working on the enforcement that. part. We're, we're getting letters out, um, you know, first initial notices that um, they're in violation and they could be shut down. And, and, and as, as we kind of do that, we're, Monica is also tracking her time so we can at some point look and say, hey, this is what it's really costing us. And then we can look at the fees based upon actual costs. Mm -hmm. uh, and did Monica be... also mention that we needed to have a, uh, a warning step procedure before we got to the final fine? I, I think right. she talked um, about that. Yeah, so. the, the actual fine would be if you took them to court and, and, and issued a citation, which hopefully would be very rare. Um, the, the enforcement really will start with, you know, we get these items in place or we're going to give you a cease and desist from operating and then pull your license or suspend it. Um, so we've kind of got that in place, and she started like the first step on a, on a number of properties. Okay. We have caps on each zone, right? R1, R2, R3, R4. We've capped how many short-term rentals can right, be in those areas. Right, we have only yeah. like one per block in the, in the residential districts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, caps and enforcement. So, so there's not too many more available um, short-term rental spaces, you know, in, in Old Town. There's a few, but not too many. So, so it'll be getting to the point of more of, rather than issuing new licenses, it's going to be mostly renewals and then um, trying to catch those that aren't paying and, and such and, and enforcement. Okay. Um, the multi-use facility, where is, again, that one's in process. I believe uh, uh, David Lady's been working on a grant for that that should be, or Chief Best, or, or I guess all you guys are working on that. April, yeah, we'll be going to Denver to do a presentation on that in March, I believe. Yeah, and so we'll know. And if we get funding on that round, um, 
then it should happen fairly quickly, I would think. Yeah. Um, if we don't, we have to go back for funding another time, then that'll move it back uh, three to six months, I think. Is that about right? I remember from reading the study, they said the most optimal site, but it was off the table, was over at the Vanderveer property. If we're able to resolve some of these issues, um, I mean, would that come back as an option? I think it might be beneficial um, once the funding's in place to possibly uh, talk to Chief Best about that. I know originally that discussion involved more of a fire training facility and some other needs that the fire department had. So I think it could definitely be an option. Um, we, DOLA does want us to kind of stick with the same square footage and general scope of work and those components as far as if the site changed, as long as it didn't affect the cost of the project, I think it's definitely an option. Mm -hmm. I think right now Doug's higher priority rather than the training facility is just the new fire station. Yeah, they need some to wash the location their, wash and, uh, their trucks. A way of financing that. Unless you know, they could back. use that to maybe get, you know, we talked about Hilton Lumber Company at one time, they were interested in putting a fire station there and uh, that might leave us some room for parking downtown. Really the old fire station. But that doesn't have anything to do with the multi facility, multi purpose facility. Yeah. But, uh, but I think they would like to see that <laughs> added to, to the short term uh, or the long term goals is, is to mm -hmm. find that location and move right. forward with that also. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but at some point that that particular building where the fire department in becomes uh, valuable enough that you know flipping that for a, a actual fire station that's built to be a fire station probably becomes a fairly doable thing yeah yeah it helps with it being in a high priced area now that yeah. uh, the value will help with a future location at least coming up with the, the site and part of the structure that probably bumps into a long-term goal of some sort, I would think. All right, so that one again falls into that in progress, so a pretty high priority it's happening. Um, amend meeting rules of procedure for increased citizen participation. And so... Um, you had planned to invite someone um, to talk about... Um, all the options we have to change. I have some some specific specific changes in in mind, and yeah, that's a goal that's really really important to me. Yep. And I think it's at the base of everything else because we need citizen participation to have a healthy moving forward of things. Yep. Um, and so, how do you see that kind of? kicking off or starting. I know we had uh, talked about, I, I've been talking with Gregory about coming in, at a work session and helping with some of just the nuts and bolts of how um, we operate. I think it but could be a pretty, that... pretty fast, fast thing. Uh, uh, one important idea is to really somehow put into the procedure an, a possibility for answering uh, public comments. I think that's, um, that's crucial. To, uh, I had the experience um, several times to come forward in front of council and uh, not getting that response was like talking a, to a brick wall. Um, I also think it would be helpful to um, have public, a uh, first public hearing um, at the, when, when first, uh, when, a, when we first talk about um, a proposal. Right now, the public hearing is at the second stage, right? Second reading. Yeah, after the second reading. I feel like public should be um, participating as early as possible, not when the process is almost done and we just hear, well, they are okay with it or not. Yeah, and I don't know. It may be uh, that being a statutory yeah, city it's, it's will I think the first and second reading way. and the, the actual public hearing part, but certainly at the first reading, you can 
get the uh, public participation that doesn't have to be at the formal hearing. Exactly. So we can call it yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Um, certainly. And I think the and I think the uh, being able to answer folks' questions during the public comment process is is certainly within council's mm -hmm. purview to do that immediately. Yeah. I don't like being a brick wall. You can, we like certainly can. Yeah. Yeah. You're Good. more than welcome, and I would think encouraged to probably Good. have that uh, interaction. And then another rule that I think would make sense to change is that it doesn't need the majority of city council to bring something onto the agenda for next time. Uh, a, min a, a minority should be able to bring an agenda up as sure. well. Um, yeah, uh, that's what democracy is about. Yeah, I believe you, I believe at this point we just, you can go to Linda before, or Larry before the meeting and put something on. But the I agenda. understand that there is a rule officially it needs the majority. There was. Or, or was that just practice? It, I don't us? know. We were required to do that previously. And I don't know whether that was just something that the mayor wanted or whether it was something that's in our code. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's, I, there's nothing in the code that would have to just be policy. Yeah. Um, various councils look at different ways. If it gets real controversial, they like, uh, um, you know, the, or at least at the staff level, you'd like to see if there's something coming up that at least we could bounce it off the mayor and see if they're okay <laughs> with it. Yeah. But um, on normal circumstances, yeah, if you ask for something to be on the agenda, we just put it on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah, so, so apparently that was just a procedural thing. Okay, so, so maybe we can, can still clarify that in a policy that, um, that it would take a clear action of some future uh, mayor to change that again. If, um, I'll, yeah. I'll go back and reread the uh, rules and procedures. I don't remember anything like that in there. And, uh, Good. Dig through and see if there's an appropriate place to insert that kind of language in there. And so, yeah, because if it was a rule I wasn't following before, because I had individual <laughs> council people, even the old yeah. council asked for yeah. something. Just uh, good. Something so, agenda structure, I guess, is what that would be. Um, okay. So, again, that's one that kind of winds up being in progress at this point now. Um, how about the entryways, um, uh, the Salida? So I, I believe this is referring to the Salida off city offices entry on the east side of the building. I don't know. I, didn't I think we had two of them. We had the entry Salida entryway at Highway 291 and 50, and then we had one that says the Tauber building entrance. Okay. Yes. All right. I, I think the entry... Uh, where 295 and F Highway 50 come together really need to be looked at by us right now. There is so much development going on. There are real opportunities, and we, we can't miss them, and that needs to be addressed really soon. Mm -hmm. okay. Actually, I think there's an old plan. Yeah, there's a great, yes, there's yes. a really nice plan for that corner with a exactly. parking and a kiosk. And mm -hmm. I think Tom was here to talk about that, but there's five entities working on that corner that yeah we'll does dave you want to coordinate that or <laughs> talk about that <laughs> 30 second update um just briefly just the way that works is if there's a development going on the developer does a traffic study submits that traffic study as well as access permit to cdot cdot's ultimately the facilitator right now for example, um, 808 Oak Street, which is a harder diesel project, which is uh, adjacent to THC, as well as um, if, I guess, Wayne Cozart's property there, a uh, slide of commons gets going, as well as um, then Two Rivers, which has a current access permit in place. CDOT ultimately is reviewing those. Um, there is a plan I could forward it for um, what um, is being proposed, wh what's required for Two Rivers, and that cleans up a lot of that intersection area, but there are some other components as far as streetscape, pedestrian crossings, probably not too far down the road, uh, triggering a signalization project, which um, could definitely um, change the dynamics of all that. But um, at some point, yeah, I guess we could get into the de details more, but 
staff's fairly involved as well as CDOT as far as um, some of the project um, implementations as far as what's uh, going to need to occur. So, so that old plan, it it actually looked at. I think there was kind of like a, a little park and some areas to park in and maybe some places for bikes where people could check out bikes or I, I don't know what all was in that section, but I think it's actually that's actually CDOT property, right? It that's is. Yeah, and I I think there's been discussion of quite a few different types of geometry, whether it potentially could be a roundabout or like I said, a traffic signal. Um, I guess what I'm referring to for access permits strictly would be the turning movements, the lane improvements, those sorts of things, but not any sort of um, you know, uh, visitor center or other type of improvements. I think Glenn had actually come across those plans the other day, and so there are plans and c concepts out there that could also be considered, but it require definitely uh, budgeted items. So, sure. so then the process for that, I mean, if we have a plan that we want to institute, then we propose that to CDOT and see what they say, and ultimately, yeah. I hope. Yeah. CDOT's a man. Yeah, they'd they'd want to review it. Some, yeah. Did you have something to add on that? Um, the only, I guess, maybe a question, David. I don't know if we can acquire that property from CDOT or CDOT the city. Yeah, it's access right away. I'm, I'm assuming. Um, they do sell land. Um, yeah. They have sold similar parcels like that to other communities. Um, I, I know uh, I was recently at a CDOT planning meeting, but and I'm aware that I think the primary intersection that they're going to focus on improving in Chafee, at least in southern Chafee County is Highway 50 and 285 in Poncha. I don't think they have any in, uh, budgeted plans in the next five to ten years to, for them to initiate a project at that intersection. Didn't our uh, highway improvement plan have something to do with that intersection? In fact, when they, when they done the NRCDC, it seems to me that that was, that was brought into play there. And uh, there was some question of whether the lighting and stuff was going to go beyond that and if there was going to be a possibility of a, of a, a traffic light there. I'm not aware of that. Possibly. I know that there are improvements uh, that were triggered down at Vandevere Road for the NRCDC, but I'm not familiar of um, requirements there. It came into play with the uh, turn lane into the uh, Forest Service and that sort of thing and a traffic study was gone in that area, 291 and 50. But uh, of course now, it's all been reconfigured. That thing's so darn dark down there, so something needs to be done with that entryway. Uh, uh, and then that, the intersection of 105 with Oak Street and Highway 50 coming in there, God forbid you'd get a round around in there, because I hate them. <laughs> no, but, uh, I'm all for them. <laughs> God bless you. I don't like them either. But, uh, you know, that uh, it just adds to a lot of confusion. <laughs> you know, you get up uh, around Peoria Street and uh, I-70 and try and take that one for a little ride. <laughs> it's uh, kind of confusing. But anyway, uh, I thought they'd done some Yeah, we can't, can't probably resolve that all tonight. but. But I think it is important to put that on, on our goals, on our yeah. agenda. This is the time when all the development is happening there. So we need to have, we need to get involved. We need to create something that we, we think makes sense, whatever it is. Yeah, and there's, um, and things are moving forward with that. And I know David's been working pretty hard at kind of what that's going to kind of look like ultimately. And, yeah, I, I guess just so you're aware of what, um, what CDOT wants re required as far as uh, the Two Rivers traffic study showed is to do away with the, what's called the slip lane. So when you're heading east into town, you kind of merge at, say, 25 miles an hour. That lane is, makes, would make it for too dangerous of an intersection at County Road 105. So they're requiring that that be removed as well as a left turn lane if you're heading out on 291. So those are the two things that you could kind of expect, I guess. Yeah. 
um, in, the, in the near future. So, so in all, I mean, there are further issues out there. One is we don't have any kind of a plan for Oak Street for 291, and as we have developments coming out there, the developers don't know whether they need to put in sidewalks or not or what that's going to look like, and that's going to be a really important uh, connectivity into the downtown from all of those out there. And then I'm also really concerned about the the speed limit out on Highway 50 in between where all this housing is going to be. And, yeah, um, and it seems like we need some buffers between the highway and the housing and I think there's a whole lot of issues to look at out there. That speed limit thing's been addressed so many times and begged with CDOT, and of course we haven't gotten anywhere. Nope. So, um, yeah. We'll, uh, what if we kind of fold this, uh, the, the entryways um, out on that side anyways, that's part of that Highway 50 kind of redevelopment and overlay. Right. And um, there's some pieces of that that are going to happen fairly quickly and some other pieces of that that are going to be a little bit more long term. But um, I know we've uh, applied for a grant with community builders to uh, potentially do a uh, get them to help us on the Highway 50 overlay project. Um, kind of a Kickstarter on that one. Um, and Actually, the deadline's coming up on the 23rd of February. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and they do want to match, so not to, I, I guess, steal any thunder, but I'll be coming to you on February 20th and asking for a resolution of support and, and possibly matching funds. Yeah. yeah, and it would be if we can get that, I think they're uh, um, – you know, that's what they do is they develop these plans and um, we would have some, an actual concrete uh, viable plan moving forward. So when there was development on the highway, we could say specifically we want X, Y, and Z. Um, and I think that's a good, a good thing. Okay. So again, we're high priority in the, in process. <laughs> We can just put blue dots all the way down that. Um, <laughs> we'll, but we can, you know, I mean, obviously these are all priorities, so, but we can go through and repackage this. I think I'm getting a pretty good feel for how that's going to look, I hope. And um, Let's see. So heavy trucks on First Street. Um, isn't that a CDOT issue? That's, that's a CDOT issue. It's a, yeah. it's a challenge. You know, I think one of the big things that's going on right now is with the uh, Two River development. There, there are a lot of gra gravel trucks coming from uh, Butala over there right now. That's not going to last forever. Um, although, as you know, that's the big piece of development is going to be out east, and the gravel is going to come from the west side, so that's going to be a thing. But there's well, no I'll tell you what, the reconfiguration of First and F has created a lot of problems. And uh, I watched the semis going through there, and it's very difficult for those people to negotiate that and have that turn lane in. And I, I'm pretty disappointed with what CDOT did myself, and I've had a lot of complaints on it. Yeah. Somebody's going to get hurt down there, bad. It may turn out to be a uh, disincentive to drive your truck through downtown as well, but yeah, it's a, it's a challenge for sure. Well, they're driving over the curbs and everything else right now, yeah. trying to get through it. And if you have one that has to make a delivery down yep. at the Vic or something, we might as well forget it. Yep. And Probably ought to look at encouraging maybe a, a truck route on Highway 50. Yeah, and they've years ago they tried to to. Uh, keep those trucks from going down and through there and they found out they got in trouble because they were paying registration fees and everything else to the state and it's the state highway yep. and they uh, opened it up we had a port out there by Sands Lake and uh, yeah it's going to be a it, it that's is, a, it's I mean, going to be a problem it's a challenge and there's not a whole lot that the city can do about that and it's really not wide enough for those trucks to get through there yep. um, so, but it should be uh, yeah I don't know if there's anything we can do about that I, I do believe that the transportation committee has been has had some discussions of this also, and um, I think is lending some support to the difficulty of having the big semis yeah. go down that street. Nobody can even 
I mean, it's dangerous for people to get in and out of their cars yeah. there. Um, so apparently there is some discussion going on about it. But. Um, and yeah, designated truck route when it hurt, but that's dependent on the, uh, the un, the un uh, uh, regulated just the stop sign intersection at 291 and, or 285 and 50. Mm -hmm. So that's an issue. Um, <coughs> Uh, highway 50 overlay zoning and with deed restricted housing exchange option. Anyone want to take on what that is getting at? Oh, that's basically yeah. specify m making what we're discussing with with Dwayne a, a bigger picture. The, our findings that uh, Highway 50 is the area in Celida where higher density uh, most yeah. likely has place and yeah. we need to work on having a clear relationship of what the city gives and on density bonus uh, and what it gets on um, back as deed restricted housing. It kind of feeds into what we talked about earlier that the more we have it written down specific the less um, but the easier it is for developers to to use that. Okay. Yeah. Do we want to talk about the uh, end lines on those? Are we talking going clear to the stockyard bridge and clear to the western part of uh, yeah. Old County Road out that west end? I think well, ultimately that Highway 50 overlay would have to be encompass the entire city limits. Yeah. Um, and is we're annexing all this property. Yeah. Uh, in my discussion with um, the director of community builders, um, she encouraged me to bring it in a little bit and yeah. maybe think more of the redevelopment potential, more of a land use standpoint, um, which kind of makes sense. She, she really thought that, and if our ultimate goal is maybe slowing down traffic, what does redevelopment look like? Um, but for instance, she said, uh, you know, maybe you look at um, 291 to steam plant, or uh, I'm sorry, um, the pool area, and look at the developed area versus three or four miles outside each way and, and kind of focus in on kind of the gateways in the downtown. But um, that was one thing um, that I was going to bring forward on the 20th is kind of what the scope of that highway 50 strategy would look like so so we may do that part with community <coughs> builders but we still need to have a plan for the You're further right. extended yeah. Out. Right. yes and and especially out be, uh, Walmart I would think that far anyway yeah where development ends basically oh. got 111 coming around making a loop back into almost virtually Holman and, and 50 there if mm -hmm. you come back through on 110 yeah it's really hard to draw a line of when it to is. stop planning. <laughs> yeah. It is really. a complicated thing. Yeah. And, that, and they may be two totally different things where we're looking at this yeah. redevelopment plan for the existing uh, in town right. stretch of 50 with uh, uh, streetscape planning for um, those outlying areas and future right. development. The edges up against in the further, because I think we're really talking with community builders, what Harold. Um, actually is talking about is when we do see reinvestment in that area what does it look like and what's the give and takes yep yep all right great so that is again something that is sort of in process and we'll be looking at tomorrow night initially with the uh, whatever that project's called slide crossing yeah slide of crossings um, but uh, Yes, and tied in as well to the housing office and also the highway. So kind of this, it's a little bit all over the place um, where that's going to be. It'll be interesting to figure out where we throw that into the mapping of all of this ultimately. Um, the transfer issue of the marijuana code yeah, hopefully we'll be putting that one to rest over the next couple of <laughs> meetings, right? We hope so. <laughs> tomorrow night, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, public hearing is tomorrow night. I wouldn't go to a... Yeah, it's a public hearing, yeah, so... Yeah. But hopefully we'll have some resolution and decide to either do nothing or do something. 
on that one um, before um, too long, sooner than later. So that is a fairly high priority one just to get off of our get off of our plate and get done, right? Okay. Um, the infrastructure, present and future. So uh, assuming that's streets and sidewalks. Yeah, and some of the stuff out there in the east end of town with Palmer and that sort of thing. And the, uh -huh. of course the on, ongoing complaints we've got on some of the cement work and stuff that was done out there. And uh, I think that's something that's gonna have to be revisited. And we're gonna have to find out. Uh, well, I know we put uh, Fifth Street aside for the time being and that's getting pretty bad. Uh, I think we're going to have to stay with those infrastructure pro, uh, uh, programs, and yep. uh, of course I know sure. Dave and his his crew have been working as hard as they can. And uh, but uh, if we don't step on that infrastructure, we're going to we're going to have more problems. I think so. I'd like to get that finished, and uh, I will say one thing that that uh, Palmer and, and uh, the street project out there has really made that part of town look really nice even though there's some problems with the, some of the stuff and that'll be um, the second half of that project to be this summer yeah there's quite a few punch list items that need corrected but it is just uh, small for the winter we'll start with probably May. Uh -huh. okay so that's ongoing and um, but high priority as well and that's been a, I think that's been a high priority thing for a while um, water treatment plan, water treatment laser project. Is that the Rusty and uh, Rusty and I have been involved in that project. Supposed to be going in out there, isn't it? Oh, the UV the, project. The UV project. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's in. That's being installed. It's that's looking pretty good. I went out there a month or so ago. Huh? I went out there a month or so ago, and they had two thirds of it. I know, maybe I almost done. Know, I like to see it get finished. As soon as possible, so we can get in place. Yeah, I think it will be here pretty soon. When do you think that'll be done? <coughs> <laughs> Poor guys are gonna work out. Now we need a, we need a hand, a microphone you can pass around. Right at the water plant itself is about 95 percent. The generator, everything's in place. Atmos needs to run a gas line across uh, um, 120. Um, and then there's some final startup items, but the plant work itself is in great shape. Um, there's, there was that change order, so there's some additional uh, items at the gallery site and um, a PRV <coughs> vault. So the work that was um, really being initiated by CDPHE is almost complete. Do you have a date or anything? Um, the Estimate. water plant, the UV work should be online within this next month. Good. So. Good. Yep. Yeah. And I think um, yeah, it's looking good if you get a chance to go out to the water treatment plant and check it out. It's pretty cool. It's crazy how they do that work in that confined space with all that big stuff. Um, all right. Uh, uh, startup trees. So I think that's kind of uh, replanting um, the urban forest. Yeah, is that just real quick. I think the tree board's doing that, and mm -hmm. I think we need to keep that going year after year. Yep, I agree. Yep. Yeah, and they're doing a, they do a good job, and that uh, adopt a tree out in your uh, parkway program is fantastic. Um, anything else on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the recycling area <laughs> solutions. <laughs> High priority. Uh, that, it's, that is very high priority. I don't know. It's gonna. It's a. It's a huge challenge. Uh, we were talking about that at the IGA meeting, um, particularly the plastics and the plastic bags. The dump doesn't want them. The recycling guys don't want them. Um, what are we gonna do? And uh, you know, a lot of municipalities are moving to banning plastic bags from grocery stores. Um, and that may be something that we have to look at. Um, but we have to go countywide if we want to do it. Well, the county, uh, there's some issues with the county doing it. It may, we need to look into that and figure out um, what our options are there. 
Um, but at this point, we, again, we really can't recycle them. The dump doesn't want them. It makes it really hard for the, uh, um, the trash, the, uh, uh, when they roll it over to, to uh, do its little composting thing out there. Um, it's a problem. <laughs> School kids had a project. I uh, had done a study on that one time, and uh, mm -hmm. Ms. Lundberg was a, a portion of it. They suggested putting a, a fee if you wanted plastic, it's going to cost you an extra couple cents. Yeah. Have it done and uh, try and uh, collect it from the people that want the plastic bags so that we can take care of it. But uh, that uh, recycling thing has been a headache from the very beginning and Mickey's done a good job with it but we just haven't had a place to put it yeah and I don't think it's going to go away unless we start doing it uh, like maybe a street uh, um, pick up from some of the waste management and some of that stuff yep. uh, to have people do it in their neighborhood that way it's scattered you know more around the city we're not having the same problem out there around that it doesn't belong to at the swimming pool. <laughs> I think also it's like signage. It's it's an it's an education thing. I don't. I think that there are a good number of people that don't realize that they have to like wash and clean their plastic before throwing it out. Like I don't think they realize that it's useless if it's dirty. Yeah. And if like signage is, goes a long way, just being like, hey, well, this is the information. You, I on. think uh, you know. I I I think the plastic bags are that bin's probably going to go away. And I think the number three through number seven plastics mm -hmm. will go away, which leaves like the number ones and twos or whatever, mm -hmm. um, which is <laughs> not much plastic. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, obviously, there's a uh, there's demand for that service because it is it's utilized, particularly the cardboard, the paper, all those things. So it's a service that has to happen, but. I wonder if it is time also to at least think about curbside pickup. Um, I know the curbside pickup doesn't work for the um, for the cardboard. We would still have to have a central location for the cardboard, but uh, I think it might be the solution, f at least something for us to consider for the rest of it. Yeah, and typically that has to be, those wind up being subsidized by the municipality to make that feasible and to make it work, so. Um, I'll also update after that high school meeting that we went to. Um, I actually have interested high school students that are willing to help clean up the center, which is crazy because there's no incentive for like uh, you know a requirement to graduate or anything like that. <laughs> That's um, they actually they actually called me. That's People doing neat. something That's without a motive. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Um, most remarkable high school kids I've come into contact with. I know it's pretty neat. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. so. Maybe you can get them excited to do some some kind of a signage as well that that helps to. To clarify things, mm -hmm. helps to clarify the responsibility that this is all our our space and needs to be kept clean and right. It uh, would be a cool project. Would be cool. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll let you know, David, when I need gloves. Uh, <laughs> and, then, um, and again, I think um, yeah, we'll keep we'll continue to work on that because that is obviously a very high priority and something that is it's driving the cra the neighbors crazy and it looks rough out there and it's a yeah could I add a quick one more short term if yep. you're, you're at your end right there yep. on, yep. on that. that's the end of it uh, I wanted to bring up the Briscoe ditch we have two issues with that and one is the irrigation right and one is the storage right does our action tomorrow night take care of both of those well, the action tomorrow night would just be to deal with the storage. Storage. Because yeah. we're, cause the, we're in, the, in violation of the irrigation right, which no, puts us in No, we're not in, in any violation with the irrigation. We're, we've just ne simply never used it. Um, it mm. could get in onto the abandonment list in 2020 okay. so if we don't proceed. So the, the process of what we're going through now is looking at designing uh, the ability to use the Briscoe Ditch water to water, irrigate the, the golf course instead of using the Harrington ditch water. 
Okay, so I, I just think getting that back in proper alignment is, is a priority this yeah, year. Okay. Water rights or something I don't want to Yeah, Yeah, and fight. I think the water, uh, um, the, the storage filing that we'll be talking about tomorrow night mm -hmm. will keep those ponds uh, full over the, you know, in the near in the near term so. right yeah we're looking two things one to be the the water court which might take a while but the, um, the substitute supply plan will allow us to keep doing what we've been doing um, until we get through the water court it should bring us into compliance as far as it will bring us into compliance and then we got the, the extra the other issue is is the long term uh, not letting those irrigation rights be abandoned yeah. and so putting that water to use for irrigation for owners uh, I think there's just three. There's three, three others beside us, I think. Starbucks and uh, yeah, Starbucks. Department of Wildlife. Uh, yep, and us. So, yeah, it appears there's there's enough water there to do um, a good portion of the golf course, if not all, in, in most years. So, um, and the costs aren't real high, we don't think. And, and I mean, the, the irrigation ditches crosses the, the airport road right there. Um, and it's above the Harrington, so we can just um, dump it into the, the existing pipe and take it to the um, the pump station at the golf course. Uh, we got a little bit of engineering to figure out because now we've just got this one short piece of pipe, 800 foot long, that we've got full, and whether uh, that will be enough storage in the pipe for these pumps when they're when they're actually running full bore, or if we're going to have to put in some type of a clear well, but. All told, that the costs aren't going to be high enough that I don't think it's going to be an issue with with moving forward, designing and constructing that project at least over the next, um, you know, not this year, but in 2019, we can budget for it and get it done. Okay. And that, that'll and be I, soon enough not to yeah, get on the, that 2020 the next, list. The 2020, yeah, it would just be on that list to be considered for abandonment. And if, as long as we got it um, prior to 2020, we were using the water. Uh, we should be perfectly safe. And one other thing, and, and this probably is part of this um, work on the code and, and uh, policy with housing, but I did just want to bring up the graduated TAP fees and, and looking at the TAP fees and yeah. make sure that gets included in that. Yes. Yeah, and that is an, uh, an agenda item coming up. Yeah, we'd be looking at that um, the February 20th meeting okay. and having a, a first reading of an ordinance. Okay. And I, I bet that's something that Sendo has an opinion on. Can I say sure. <laughs> so when you're talking about TAP fees, are you talking about the development fees? Um, yeah, so it, it would you're not tie, talking about would, what I'm interested. No, in. it would tie into everything that you're that you're looking at the fee structure overall. We'd look at the whole fee structure. Yeah, it's the whole fee structure. And when uh, and that is on the agenda. Uh, coming, a it will it'll be, be on I think the, on the, the February twentieth. We'll have an ordinance uh, for first reading. Yeah. So so oh, <laughs> speak. I know. So uh, yes, we, February twentieth. Yes. Oh, okay. So we're and moving forward. We're trying to do it and trying to make it more equitable for everybody and and uh, um, just work better than what it does right now. Okay, good. Um, and also a friend of mine uh, requested that I request that you put the Harrington ditch on the short-term goals. Uh, he said that it is, I'm not a ditch person. I don't know anything about ditches. But he said it's not functioning correctly and it's affecting the water supply? Yeah. That's what I know. I don't, yeah, I, I, my understanding is it's working fairly well. Okay. Well, I will Certainly, if, if he has back. something specific, uh, have him reach out to me. Yeah, it's Kirby. Do you know Kirby Pershbacher? Oh, I know Kirby. Okay. I'll give him a call. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Um. Anything else on, that we need to throw on our little short-term list? I think that's a pretty good pile of uh, stuff to chase after for the coming months. A little more than we get caught up with. <laughs> yep. 
and yeah, and most of it's stuff that we're working on, so it's good. Um, let's go through these kind of long-term goals, and this is pretty, pretty in depth, but try and get through it uh, as quickly as possible. Um, so and we've talked about most of this stuff, I think, but um, I think we need to just maybe these are the ones that I think are more important to have actual priorities set on and where we start and what we're working on immediately and what we're kind of um, looking at but punting down the road a little ways. So um, housing, which would be affordable housing, um, some new approaches, um, long term housing, art force housing, housing plan, um, plans for use of economic development fund, laying out housing exchange initiatives. All of these things are uh, sort of pieces of the same, mm -hmm. same discussion, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think it's, uh, you know, a matter of, you know, how high of a priority is working on housing in the long term? The high. high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so certainly that that's kind of one of our the number one things, and it's something that's super important to the community. It's it's at a critical uh, juncture right now, um, and something that um, I think just about all of us are involved in in some way or another, working on that problem. Um, is there anything kind of within that? scope that list of things that would be the very top of that pie, or do they all kind of carry equal equal weight? I mean, I a think, lot of them are the I same think the thing. But. Workforce housing, yeah. you know, I think it's a pretty high priority. We're losing people out of the area. They're moving to different places and trying to commute back and forth. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's starting to affect you know, we can't find people to fill some of these jobs around mm -hmm. here. And, and other right. times we're losing, losing uh, things that could come here. Uh, you know, I drove clear to Alamosa today to get some Kentucky Fried Chicken. And, uh, <laughs> you know, some of those things I'd like to see us. Give me a phone call before you do that. I just put my order in. <laughs> it was still warm when I got home. <laughs> you know, when you look around at what we've lost and... Uh, stuff and, and a lot of this is probably because of the inability to have workers come in and do some of this stuff because they had no place to, to live and uh, I suggested numerous times to uh, people about uh, mobile homes and uh, some of the uh, prefabricated homes and uh, that sort of thing. I've got some in the, out in the area of Poncha Springs and uh, we find that there's a difficulty in getting them financed. And, uh, and insert. And this is creating a problem even with the uh, one of our bigger employers, and that's the uh, Colorado Department of Corrections. Yep. They're having to bring people in here from Canyon City and Colorado Springs to work. Yep. They simply can't find something that's affordable. And those guys, they're getting a decent wage, let's face it. But uh, we're going to have to do something. Uh, you know, uh, I, I understand Vale and Crested Butte, or Vale and uh, yeah, Crested Butte, some of those people are looking at uh, subsidized housing. I would hope that we wouldn't have to do that with the city, but I would encourage that with anybody that wanted to put a business that employ somebody. I see some of uh, with that uh, food store that's going to go in there. They anticipate, what, 20 to 30 employees? That's a pretty good shot in the arm. Where are we going to put them? Yeah. And uh, how much are they willing to pay, or when, how much can they pay you know, uh, to get them in here? So, uh, yep. Yep. And, yep. It seems like we talk a lot about housing issues. What if we had a long term housing plan that was revised or re reconsidered in, in the short term and updated, and things were checked off and things were prioritized? That way, everything could be encompassed in that larger plan. So it would be both short-term and long-term. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do believe most of this kind of falls into that, yep. Yep. 
Thank Each of us probably had our own wording for, for this when we accepted it. But the, the one thing I do see on here that's probably a little different and is something that we can actually, I think, act on pretty soon is how we use our economic development fund and are we going to use that money for incentives. Uh, and I would really like to see some of that money used for incentives for um, rentals. We, we know from the housing study that was done that rentals are our biggest uh, issue. And, um, and we've certainly had a lot of local developers, which I, I thank for stepping up and, and trying to do some housing that is, is modest, that uh, a lot more of our residents have access to. Um, but we just don't seem to be seen so much in the rental area and um, and you know one of the ideas for the use of the economic development fund which and I think it would be easier again for developers if it was laid out you know if you set if you do a housing project that's a rental project and you set so many units aside for people that are 60 percent AMI or under then then we'll pay half your tap fees or out of that fund or we'll pay some of your development fee out of that fund or what, whatever we decide. But, right. but to get that laid out so that a developer can plan on that um, and, and use, and I know there's not a lot of money in that fund, no. you know, and I would like to actually think about some ways to get more money into that fund mm -hmm. uh, so that we could use it for incentives and, and, uh, and help for that. But, but I think that is something that is, you know, that we could actually look at, and maybe that should be more in the short term than the long term. I and know. is there any way, like, when we're talking about fees in lieu of, uh, for that to go into that fund, or does it just go into the shuffle, and how do we, like, is that a way of assigning certain fees to the fund? Yeah, we'd have to look at what funds and we do if it was a fee in lieu of, um, it would have to be logically go to a reserve in the right fund. Um, no. But certainly, yeah. Um, okay. You know, well, like for parking, a fee in lieu of parking, yeah, it would need to go into a fund that could be used for parking. But. Yeah. So that would be the inclusionary zoning thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that we could um, right have a fee in the exactly. what portion what portion of the lodging tax goes into that now anything no no lodging tax goes, goes to, to recreation recreation right now and parks and when and we look at uh, short term and long term uh, vacation homes and that sort of thing maybe we ought to take a look at that to have a certain amount of that go into into that fund we had discussed that if people got fines for that, that that could go into some sort of a housing fund, but Can we do that yeah. an application. No. The lodging right. taxes now, that was set in that bottled language, so you have to go yeah. back to the voters to change the, the use of the funds. You may have to write something to go on the ballot then. <laughs> but, yeah, but I, I do think we should think about all of that and, yep. and how that fund could be used and how we could do that. And, and like I said, maybe that should be in the short term instead of the long term. And some of this will go to uh, the housing office once it gets established, um, whatever that structure looks like, and whatever its funding mechanism and scope, you know, could affect some of this stuff in the long term as well. So, okay. Um, but I think we're all in agreement that housing is kind of top of the pyramid yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. Of course it is with most, it is with most. <laughs> yeah, that's communities yeah. right now and it's yeah. a real problem but yeah. uh, wide everywhere they okay. anticipate a bust i guess huh on uh, real estate and stuff maybe that'll <laughs> i don't want to see that happen but uh, yeah. maybe it'll take care of itself i don't know i hope not. that's <laughs> that's the only thing i got that's worth anything is some real estate <laughs> um let's see so planning and development uh the highway 50 overlay plan for highway 50 uh, creating a rec district, utilizing uh, Van and Devere, comp plan updates, integrate health and wellness into long-term plans for Salida, um, pool rec facilities, and future development and annexation plans are under that oh, 291 corridor, 291 and 50 
uh, gateway and lowering speeds um, okay, look on and lining the highway around new housing. So um, all of those, I think, are critical, but is there something in there that tops that list? Well, I'm repeating myself. Um, it's crucial that uh, where Highway 50 meets 291. I think so, too. I mean, it's all planning, and all of this stuff is happening now, and we, yeah. we need to have a plan in place to, to deal with it. So kind of that 50 gateway and 50 overlay, is that? Mm-hmm. And the other piece I would just mention, because I, I think in that 2013 comprehensive plan, as well as in the Chafee County housing study, it just talked about how critical the Vanderveer property is. And I know the first step, obviously, is sitting down with them, but I, I think that needs to be a, something that we stay focused on for the next few years. But I don't think we want to put so much focus on it that, that that's the only thing. Sure. We need to look at annexation and we need to look at some of these other properties around here, try to encourage people to annex in so that we got some other options. And uh, that school bus uh, situation, I know there was quite a bit of effort put into it and it ended up going out to Poncha. And, uh, but I don't think Vanderveer is the only thing that's going to be the answer to it. It's not a godsend and it's not going to be the answer to all this stuff. Uh, but I think there's some things that we need to look at, and that's acquiring other land, uh, annexing some of that stuff in here, and uh, as we go on down the list, I want to talk a little bit about the pool and recreation. Yep. What about, uh, so, and kind of, you know, all these things would kind of fall underneath that uh, comp plan update, right? I mean, they're all... They're all things that would be addressed in that. Um, and if you look at it, there's a handful of these things that are addressed in the 2013 comp plan. Um, but not, not all of them. There's you know, a little bit ta of talk about the Highway 50 corridor and the gateways, and there's talk about the the pool and there's some talk about the development and annexation plans, but um, it may touch on a rec district. I'd have to go look again, but it doesn't talk about a Highway 50 redevelopment at all. It talks about the sidewalks and the lighting. Um, touches on Vanderveer because that was still a thing, um, although that was more of the uh, a little different situation than it is now for sure. So I think that's kind of needs to be up there somewhere near the top. The pool and the recreation facilities. Yeah, I, uh, you know, the pool has, has served as a tourist attraction for many, many years throughout the Front Range and stuff. And of course, so now we're getting a lot of hot, hot spring pools and things around. And uh, I've had a lot of people bring uh, the question to me about our property that we hold up on Poncha Pass or in the Poncha Springs area. Uh, but we need to look at maybe developing that or doing something. And there's been studies on the, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, use of that water for uh, developing electricity and a lot of other things in the city. And, and I guess that's just went to waste. But, uh, yeah. you know, there's, a, there's some stuff there that I think we need to look at. Yeah, it is a... Uh, if you, we work with Pontius Springs on some of that stuff and developing, that would also go in a long ways with recreation and uh, maybe the use of some of that hot water to... Uh, you know, uh, geothermal. I agree with Mike. It's yeah. a huge, I huge too. asset that and, could yeah. and totally. You know, I mean, you you just take a trip up and look at Princeton. I mean, that's I know that guy's got a lot of money and stuff that we don't have, but uh, there's a lot of possibilities that we could partnership with Poncha Springs. 
I'm really impressed with what uh, Ben Skanga and that and that guy, those people out there, done with their housing and that sort of thing, and and maybe even you know that come in with the recreation portion of it. We had a swimming pool up there that people used to like to go up there and swim in. Mm -hmm. they just fill it full of dirt. Let's uh, let's let's yeah. bump back to. Uh, Okay. planning and development a little bit because there is a whole separate category on hot springs okay. here that um, if we start talking about we're going to have to skip over all this stuff and we won't talk okay. about it okay okay there, um, are, there are a couple things i don't know if they were exactly meant to be under the hot springs but it seems to me that should be over here in this planning and developing section the plan for parks as annexation occurs and yep. Um, and maybe the open space should also be over here, and we already yep. kind of said that the startup trees would be ongoing, but. Yep. Yeah, we've kind of done that one, the multi-use facility, yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. so, so we can probably move the uh, open space up into planning, because that certainly is something that is a uh, um, support for the rental properties and the plans for parks as annexation occurs we kind of get bumped back up into planning and development I think um, and maybe the plan I the plan for the support for the city's three rental properties mm -hmm. you know so we've got so, Cahan renting a property we have the community center and we have the museum right and it, it just seems to me that we need a, a plan so that we kind of consistently treat all of those in a similar way and make some decisions about you know i mean we have certain obligations for the building and we have certain insurance on the building but yep. what what do we do on the interiors because it, it seems like we're doing some for one and not for the other the others are doing those things on their own and just just get some consistency there and some sort of a, a policy and make sure that our rental agreements reflect that Yep, and I think so I think the rental agree are the rental agreements the same for all three? The, the, yeah, basically the same. Basically the same. Yeah, um, and, and yet we're treating them all differently. Yeah, the only di we're, yeah, the the maintenance part of it is all the same for all of them. The difference is in the rent. Um, one's nothing, one's one dollar and one uh, the K H E N is like a couple hundred, hundred dollars a, a month. So it's it's a little bit higher. But they're all based upon the fact that the um, Tenant was supposed to do the maintenance in lieu of um, giving us rent. Right, right. Um, so one way to look at that would say, yeah, we we take over, make sure that we maintain our buildings to keep them up. But then should the tenant be paying a reasonable rent rate right. for it right. to cover that? Yeah. Anyway, I just think well, it's something yep. we should have a discussion yeah. of. Yeah, and I think that goes. We need another category in here, probably that's infrastructure and city property. Um, so we can add that maybe at the bottom and we'll get back to that um, any you know, the pool and facilities I think is you know that's a little bit separate from the hot springs which is talking about the actual mm. poncha hot springs it looks like to me um, and so that would be, you know, that would be more with planning and development, certainly. And it's, you know, do we, are we interested in the, in the soaking pool development, um, the parking in the back, ties to the recycling? Um, how does all of that look in the next few years? <laughs> yeah, it's important. <laughs> Crickets. Oh. Okay. Um, and then silent affirmation. Yes, yeah, silent affirmation. That, that is important. <laughs> um, I know that's a, that's um, something that Teresa is very vested in and um, very interested in seeing move forward. Um, what about? I think the future development and annexation plans. Um, that that kind of falls under the comp plan and going back and looking at you know where's the city going to grow in the future and we have some of that information out there actually quite a bit of it um, that also ties to the uh, regional planning commission which we're re-kicking off it sounds like that's uh, we had pretty good response from the county on that i thought right right 
Yeah, I, I was going to say the same thing, Mayor, is, yeah, that's kind of our three-mile plan, and we do kind of set, so we need to look at the municipal planning area, the municipal service area. Um, I'm not sure that's actually in the comp plan or or whether that was a separate function, but, right, that is I, on I our thought it, to yeah, do list. Yeah, I don't list. remember, but it was, for, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we do have a... Um, Kind of along those lines, we're meeting with uh, Ben Skangi and Brian from uh, Poncha on Thursday or Thursday to talk about the uh, the separator between Poncha and Salida and what that looks like and what that is. So that should be a good a good conversation. Um. Let's see, Hot Spring, let's see, 291 corridor, that's obviously a big deal, um, and we talked about that with uh, development along Rainbow Boulevard in particular, I think, is part of that, and then I would guess also um, there will be some significant redevelopment at some point out by the hospital, that's, with that, the way that's growing, that has to become some of the hot real estate in town. Um, and so that should be considered within that, um, right? Yes. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Um, lowering the speed limit and lining the highway around new housing. Man, it'd be great if we could have the same speed limit as every other town on Highway 50 through our town, huh? Um, <laughs> There is, uh, yeah, I think 35 is the fastest through any, uh, any place else on Highway 50. Well, what I hear is that it is important that CDOT keeps hearing regularly from the administration. I know that, that we don't really have a lot of um, legal uh, leverage, but, but if we stay on, on it, yeah. it's better than not. Yeah, and that was kind of the message I think I got from CDOT at the meeting uh, not too long ago was just to stay, keep after them. I think the one thing is they would do a, tra a traffic study, and that does give you the potential of the speed limit going, yeah. up, which is scary. But, you know, we could all go, uh, I don't know, drive really, really slow every <laughs> yeah. day for a month on highway. Yeah, all thing. day long. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. Be worth it. Um, let's see. Yeah, so those are all kind of in together and important, I think. Uh, hot Springs, that is, a, I think that is kind of a, again, a really important long-range thing that we should have some ongoing momentum on. I had the opportunity a couple of weeks ago. David took me around and gave me a tour of it, and uh, I was really impressed by the amount of passion you had around ideas around build, building something up there, maybe a few pools. I don't know if you would feel comfortable coming up and sharing a little of that vision right now, but I, I was inspired by it, so. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. I'd just probably attest that it's a very scenic spot, you know. I think that's, uh, you know, if you had a chance to go up there, it's, if you haven't seen it, it is very scenic, great views of the whole valley. And um, there, on the Slida website, there's, I think, four geothermal studies, and it's really impressive as far as the, um, the thermal gradient up there. It's, uh, like, I think seven times the higher gradient than the statewide average for hot springs, which means whether it's for power generation or soaking pools, whatever, um, the temperature increases um, significantly with you know shallow wells, which is rare. A lot of times, wells have to go very, very deep to extract energy. So there's a lot of real positives to the site. Probably is underutilized. It'd be awesome to see some improvements. But yeah, used to be a to real at. good tourist. Trap, for especially yeah. for skinny dippers. And, uh, yeah, you can tell there's a lot of abandoned structures. I'm not, you know, I, I'd be kind of curious to learn more about the history of the scout Boy camp Scouts. Boy Scouts, yeah, there, they put it up there. And, uh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice place. And it's a shame that, uh, you know, there's something that nice that's not ever been developed. And well, it could be. Up to us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one up there would be a hot tub for you. I guess. <laughs> yeah, and I think yeah. the, uh, the energy potential up there is, uh, 
yeah. as impressive as well. Mm -hmm. And that could be uh, something that would be a real, uh, potentially a real uh, net benefit to every resident of Salida. Um, and, uh, you know, it also uh, help insulate us from larger grid, uh, electric grid issues out in the world. So yep. um, I think that's something if we can kind of just keep our eye on that and keep it something moving forward and happening there would be great. People who were doing Mount Princeton up there is also the ones that were doing some of the studies out there, PT, and I, I haven't seen any of that for several years now. And there is a there is a guy locally that's uh, geothermal. Uh, it's Fred Henderson. Yeah, Fred. So um, he's one of them. He's been on my list of guys to get a hold of and talk to a little bit about that. Looking at a gold I'll, mine out there. I'll, I'll share some information with you. Yeah. That I received. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, then transportation and parking, and again, we've talked about a lot of this stuff, but um, it doesn't. It is important, obviously. It needs to be an ongoing, uh, ongoing project. The uh, I think the uh, um, the C dot Bustang program is pretty exciting. I think that's going to be a, a good regional um, bus system that will be pretty useful. Um, It'll be interesting to, after our meeting uh, tomorrow or the day after, I mean, that might be on Thursday too. It's Thursday. It's this week, yeah. Um, to hear more about that. Um, and then we should talk about the uh, shuttle for the summer too. We did the, there was the shuttle that we ran last uh, during the parking, the light thing. Construction, yeah. Construction that seemed to be fairly successful. Um, and so I don't know where we are for yeah, well, shuttle we, we for We took the, the money in the budget time. to be able to, to cover that through the well, that. three months of the summer. So yeah. I'd like to see some interest shown towards our little taxi. The guy there's doing a, a, a lot of a lot yep. of stuff yep. to benefiting the, the merchants downtown and also out on Highway 50. Yeah, in my understanding, he's getting uh, another couple of cars for the yeah, summer. He's got some new ones. He's he's upgrading and he's doing a good job. So that's good news. Yeah. I think one of the other things that we considered at one point, and I don't know if we want to think about it again, but we looked into uh, trolley rentals. Mm -hmm. You know those trolleys. I, I, they're pretty visible and they carry a lot more people than the shuttle. And I was trying to remember what the rental was. I, it was a four-month rental. A yeah. trolley, like, you mean like a like a rickshaw or something trolley like that? Car, or, yeah. yeah, like a, it, it, they look like trolley cars, you know, and you use yeah. them in the summers. And mm. but but they're the, more the size of a larger bus, so they they carry a good number of people. Where the shuttles, I don't know, what do they carry? Like nine people or something, hmm. something like that. But these would probably carry thirty people or something like that. So, and we did look. At one point, in there is a rental company uh, that does those, and maybe at some point we want to do it. But I, I think the park and ride ideas, you know, and having some of those around town, especially out on Highway 50, is really something for us to think about. Yep. Okay. And. Uh, uh, and I would like to. Kind of, I think that transportation plan could be with the county transportation plan. All that can be would be useful to revisit that and yes. um, make sure that's integrated into whatever the county is doing. Um, let's see, ongoing budget plan. I think that's uh, that was me. Um, I think that's, uh, you know, I, I would like to have uh, more of a long range um, budget plan for the city. So, um, you know, we could start to look at some of these projects and it, there's a, the bones of it are out there. They're around, I think the department guys have your five year 
kind of plan worked out. Um, yeah, and we, we have not updated that five-year plan, capital plan, yeah. since we did the last budget because there was right. you know, things going back and forth. Um, so I think that would be the next step from the yeah. staff level is to, to bring get that updated and bring that back to the yep. council to formally um, approve it yep. as a five-year plan. Yeah, and that way we can go out and look at do some some if or kind of planning and um, figure out how we would pay for, you know, some of this stuff and where it would fit into the budget and what year it would fit into the budget and that gives you you know a little more momentum towards achieving some of these goals and could we include in that also i'd like to see a five-year or seven-year plan for positions that we have need for um, that um, are going to come up in the future and have been coming up and that we've been turning down and some sort of a plan for how we might hire some of those uh, new positions. Okay. Yeah, we'll kind of maybe do that in two steps. We'll do the, the capital plan um, and then move right into a, a long-term personnel Personnel position. plan, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, CIP. Uh, you just kind of <laughs> covered that. It's a capital improvement <laughs> plan, so that's... In that the was... distilling world, that's a clean in place uh, <laughs> <laughs> set up, so... <laughs> All right. Terminal. Great. Uh, area economic development and job creation, attracting new businesses, vocational facilities, and institutes of higher learning. Um, again, I think, uh, yeah, it's critical for our future, right? Um, everybody else. I, that was one of the things I noticed when I was down at the outdoor retailer show is um, I was not the only mayor walking around that building. There were every other town in Colorado's mayor was walking around that building saying, hey, my town's the greatest one in Colorado. You should come check it out and maybe move your business there. Um, yeah, this was the one I printed out. So if we want to, you know, if we want to be in that game, we certainly need uh, to throw some, some resources at it and some, some energy that direction. And Wendell Pryor is the perfect person to. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, his, his vision tends to be a little bit more countywide, certainly. Um, and I think we have, as a city, it'd be useful for us to have um, somebody that um, that was kind of part of their their presence was to to make sure that they were interfacing with the Economic Development Corp. Um, and then also um, working on those, you know, working on those contacts for businesses outside of the community, but also working with the businesses that are within the community. Um, what, you know, what can we do to help them grow and expand and pay their employees more and employ more people and all those things. Um, and I think that might be a kind of to, to Cheryl's point of, you know, how, how do we fund a new position or a part-time new position or who on staff can dedicate some time to doing that kind of thing. So. Anything else on that stuff that I just want to talk about? And I'll go in, uh, maybe I'll stop in tomorrow or Wednesday and sit down with Linda and we can repackage all of this with Larry's input on yep. that too. Great. Um, identifying commercial zones for sales tax capture potential. Who's got that? I think that was more of being sure that we don't lose a, a, a commercial property to uh, housing. Yep. We all live on sales tax here yep. or operate. Yep. Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's critical. And I think especially with the, uh, as we s start to kind of push the Highway 50 redevelopment, and if we're going to do housing projects out there, how do we make sure we don't lose any of that? 
something specific to that, I wonder whether we could change the C2 code to not allow um, taking away the sales uh, space um, in, in front of the building. Um, there are, there's at least one change of use that I'm aware of uh, that recently happened. And uh, the fact is that right now prices for residentials are higher than uh, for stores. So there is an economic, um, it makes sense to redevelop that and make, a, make it residential. And we sh maybe we should um, draw a line and say so many feet uh, from the front of the building need to be commercial. sales or commercial. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. I'm sure that's something planning can take a look at. <laughs> Drumming up a little job security for you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Need to hire four new guys. Now. Let's see. Um, long term planning staff needs. We talked about that. Um, and then we should add, again add another uh, infrastructure and property um, list there. And how do we plan to support and take care of our. You know, just I think long-term property uh, maintenance plans, which I think we have some of that going on, right? But there's, you know, there's also some of our rental properties that aren't getting 100% of what they should be getting, probably. Anything else along those lines that you guys want to talk about? Um, we kind of. And do we went over um, on you know back to it looked like it was a double on recycling center issue, but um, I brought up um, a composting aspect mostly because of oh, all yeah. the agriculture in our, in our area, but um, also just it kind of um, came uh, came about just uh, realizing like at the uh, at the fishing hatchery. Um, you use like all those fish castings, which are like gold for, for farming projects, and it just kind of gets dumped into, I believe, Sands Lake. Or, yeah. Um, you know, and it's just kind of like there's nowhere else to put it. Let's just kind of dump it. And, it's, and that's something that people buy at a store, <laughs> and it's being dumped. So it's, it, it's something to think about. I don't know if there's any other place that, obviously, we already have recycling issues on that level, so composting. Uh, translated to issues would be a, a smelly one for sure, but um, it is something to think about. Uh, I don't know if any other place really has addresses that as far as, as far as like a you know composting project and collecting of those things. But I know I, I at the hostel I supply uh, uh, Ringeting Farms with like compost that just comes from our operation, and it's 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 definitely a need, um, especially out here. It's not we mineral have a, rich. We have a pretty impressive uh, composting uh, project going on out at the waste treatment plant there. Oh, right on. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. people want to come get it. It's surprising. Yeah. Kind of stinks. Really? Yeah. Um, Where is that? Is that posted stuff. somewhere? <coughs> that that's a I don't know. Thing. Usually yeah. there's yeah. some sort of an <coughs> at the beginning of the summer, I think, in the yeah. paper about it. Yeah. Cool. Good um, yeah. It's good fertilizer. Yep, it's good yeah. fertilizer. <laughs> Um, but I mean, even for like, if we're talking like ringeting farms, for instance, I mean, that's baby greens, so yep. kind of they can't use manure. They, they yep. can use like, right. you know, but they can use fish castings, yep. um, um, things like yep. that. But, and I think the point with that being is that we do have some expertise at composting. Cool. Available. Um, great. Anything else you just want to touch on? If you guys, uh, I think it'd be helpful um, if you guys have some notes on these things that you would like to uh, send send to me. In that economic development deal with uh, trying to attract new businesses. I'd like to see more the city be in more of a position to help new businesses come in, like we did with. Uh, Town and country. We uh, work with their sales tax, mm -hmm. and uh, we got them in there, and that's a that's a an awful nice facility. 
mm -hmm. small town, but uh, maybe we could work in that direction. I, I'm really concerned. We've lost, I don't know how many uh, fast food chains out of here. And uh, I tried to get day in Alamosa to get Arby's up here, but uh, unfortunately they're, they're holding uh, the franchise, U.S. Beef and Denver's holding that. But, you know, I, I know they don't want to see box stores. But I'm going to tell you what, these tourists come in, you know, you look at McDonald's, you know, you look at some of these places, and uh, I, really, I really think we need to, to put an emphasis on getting some, some jobs in here. I've often thought about uh, the drones, and that's a pretty contra controversial subject right now, but I'm going to tell you what, uh, this area is in, it's conducive to uh, the terrain for search and rescue and that sort of thing, and uh, a tech school or vocational school would go right along with that, and you're talking about some federal money to come in on some of that stuff, and that's what I'd like to see. If there's any way possible that we could have somebody I know Wendell's working and so is Jeff Post, but we need to advertise we're, we're open for business. See if we can get something in here. We owe that to our young people, families. Excellent. Yep, and I think, yeah, I think we could do some. I will say that gal done an excellent job on the cover of this. I'm really impressed. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Nice job on it. Well, let her know. Anything, <laughs> I think anything that's else anybody wants to add to the conversation? Or should we go home and get some rest before we come back and do it? Yeah. <laughs> Even a longer evening tomorrow, yeah. it looks we'll like. Just stay until then, you know. <laughs> commuting is such a pain. All right, great. Yeah, and any notes you guys have on this, uh, make sure you get them to me so then we can sit down and repackage this. In a okay. Good use of form. You only got three dots out of there, Linda. What's the deal? Thanks, everyone.